Aaron here from Hammer Performance. Welcome back to our shop. Today we're going to talk about installing a cylinder onto a motor with the piston, of course. Uh, this is a step that everybody has to go through when they install a 1250 or 1275 kit. It's one small part of the installation of the whole kit, but it's an important part, and it's a part that a lot of people have a little trouble with or maybe they don't understand. Now, it's described in the kit installation instructions, and I want you to read that. Um, and there are a bunch of other things that are described there, too, that are very, very important. You need to read it all. But uh, I think that having a, a video um, showing how to do this is probably extremely helpful. So that's what we're going to talk about today. Okay, so first off, what I have here is a cylinder uh, with the piston already installed. The rings are already installed and the ring gaps are set. It's an entire section in the uh, installation instructions on the website that tell you all about how to set the ring gaps and get the cylinder and piston into this state. There's also lube in here, which is very, very important. But more than 90% of our customers actually purchase this service from us. So the cylinder comes to them inside of this plastic bag, uh, rings, pistons already installed, ready to go, and even one circlip is already installed into the piston. And that's important because uh, one of the most uh, common questions we get from customers who receive a new 1250 or 1275 kit is, where are my circlips? They, they uh, unpack everything, they find the wrist pin, and they find a little baggie uh, packed under the wrist pin and it's got two circlips in it and they think that, oh, we've shorted them two circlips. So the other two are already actually installed in the piston for you to make that easier. Okay, so right here I have a Buell XB motor, same as an XL, everything about what we're doing is gonna be the same. And I have positioned this motor where I want it to install the front cylinder. This isn't even the right cylinder for this motor. This is a small fin. Buell XB uses a big fin, but it, it's all the same. It'll work. Um, what I've done is I've turned the crank such that the front connecting rod is about halfway down. And that's going to help me as I install the cylinder because the um, cylinder studs will have started engaging into the holes in the cylinder and that kind of helps hold it stable. It's really best if you have two people doing this. I'm going to try to do it myself here, um, which I, I've done many times successfully, so I don't anticipate too much trouble. But if you have a second person who can hold the cylinder and guide it on while the other person puts the wrist pin through, that's a good thing. So, um, but if you have to do it by yourself, it's not that big of a deal. Okay, so um, you can, of course, gap the rings yourself, but I'm going to tell you right now, it's tedious and it's error prone to do it. Our, our instructions tell you how to do it using a file mounted in a a bench vise and so on. But the problem with doing it yourself is that it's very, very easy to overshoot the gap. It's also somewhat difficult to keep the gaps uh, parallel to each other on each uh, side of the ring. Um, so, I, you know, more than 90% of our customers buy this service and have us do it for them. Our ring gapping machine does a perfect job. Ross, the guy who does it, does a perfect job. This will come to you um, all ready to go more than 90% of our customers buy this. Of the few who don't, probably half of them come back and ask us for another set of rings because they botched the job. And the set of rings costs as much as the service. So I really highly encourage you to purchase the service from us. First thing you're gonna do when you pull it out of the, the bag, the plastic bag that it comes in, is you've gotta get the piston on far enough out of the cylinder that the wrist pin uh, boss is exposed and you can slide the pin in and out. This is what most people make a mistake on. Because they, they reach in here and they push on this piston and it goes flying out, bounces across the floor, damages the piston, damages the ring. We're not gonna do that today. I'm gonna show you how. I'm gonna stick my fist right up in here. There's some assembly lube in there and that's fine. I'm gonna hold my fingers right over the spigot like this and give it a push. And what my fingers are gonna do is they're going to keep it from coming out too far, okay? That's what you do. You do it carefully so you don't pop it out. Now if I go another eighth of an inch, the rings are going to pop out of there. And then I've got to put the rings back in and I don't want to have to do that. So I've pushed it out just far enough that the pin is able to go in and out of the piston without any trouble. Next, um, as I mentioned, I've positioned the motor such that we're about halfway down. And furthermore, we're past top dead center. If I uh, I'm halfway down on the other side of top dead center. The rod is laying way over here. That makes it just a little more difficult to do. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this cylinder. I'm going to slide it over the studs like this. I take this pen. I'm going to get it started in here. I'll move the rod over. 
And then I'm going to wiggle, twist, wiggle, twist, give a little push to the pin, the pin slides through, and we're connected to the connecting rod. The next thing we're going to do before we do anything else, you notice that I've let go of the cylinder. The cylinder has cocked this way, and the studs are helping hold it in place. And that's what I want. Okay. Next, I'm going to try to put the circlip in. So the circlips look like this. They're packed um, in the bottom of your piston, as I mentioned. Before I try to put this in, always, always, always put a rag underneath of the piston. Reason being, if something goes wrong and that clip pops out of there, if it goes flying across the room, you can go find it. If it goes down inside the motor, you're fishing with a magnet trying to find it. And that's very, very difficult to do. I've got to put my old man reading glasses on here because I can't possibly do this without them. Now, the circlip, of course, has a gap in between it. And in the piston, you'll notice a little slot right there. That slot is your access slot for removing the circlip sometime in the future with a small pointed tool of some kind. You don't want to put the gap um, for the circlip right in that slot because then someday when you want to return it or remove it, you're not going to be able to get anything under it and, uh, and pry. So it doesn't, you know, you, you want to put that gap in the circlip near that slot, but you don't want it opposite, you know, to, you don't want it on the slot and you don't want it opposite to the slot. It's opposite to the slot, it's very, very hard to pry the circlip out. So you can put it at 90 degrees, you can put it straight up and down. You want the gap somewhere near the slot, but not directly on it. So to get the circlip in, what I do, and you, you want to do this without, uh, you know, jostling things too much because it can uh, cause you to uh, pop the piston right out of the the uh, cylinder, or pop the rings out at least. So I've started the top of the circlip is what I've done here. And now I've, I've gone around with it, and I'm going to take a, this uh, plastic into this pin here, I'm going to use it to push the circlip all the way in like this. Okay, notice I didn't use a metal tool. You don't want to nick that uh, circlip because a nick causes a stress riser which could cause a failure. Next thing I'm going to do, now that I've got it in there, is I'm going to go all the way around and I'm going to double and triple check that I've got it in there because this is not something you want to make a mistake on. If that thing isn't all the way in there, you're going to suffer a very, very nasty failure. Okay. Once I've got it in place, then I'm going to remove my rag, and we're not going to just go shoving the cylinder down uh, onto the case or anything like that. Here's what we're going to do. We're going to grab the piston like this, and grab the cylinder like this, and we're going to squeeze the two together, and squeeze the piston back up inside of the cylinder. Now I'm going to very, very carefully set the cylinder down, and I'm going to guide the spigot into the case. You don't want to go slamming it into the case. That spigot is very, very thin, and it's uh, extremely fragile. So we're going to slide it on there carefully, set it in place, the dowel's aligned, and we're good to go. The next step that I would do from here is described in the kit installation instructions. So I take some of those plastic PVC unions, put them over two of the head bolts diagonally from each other, uh, two of the cylinder studs, I mean, put the shorter of the head bolts on there, that will hold the cylinder down into place. This is described in the instructions so that you can now turn the motor over and do the other cylinder without worrying about this thing jumping off of there and the piston potentially getting banged around or being pulled out. So that's the basic procedure. Um, if you look in the factory service manual, you're going to see a whole different procedure. And the, the factory service manual procedure works really well. I mean, it, it involves two plates to support the piston and a ring compressor, and you put the piston onto the to the rod without the uh, uh, cylinder in place. Um, you, at that point, um, push the cylinder down uh, over the rings, shoving the ring compressor down. You remove the ring compressor, remove the plates, and put it down. That works great, but there are two special tools involved in doing that. This method doesn't require any special tools, so and, and this method works just fine. You know, thousands and thousands of people have used this method around the world for decades. It's certainly not anything we invented. It works just great, and uh, uh, people have been very, very successful with it. So that's it. Um, again, please be sure to read all of the kit installation instructions. There are tons and tons of, of things like this, things that are even much more important than this that 
Um, you know, 99% of the problems that guys have are from failure to read the instructions, quite honestly. So read the instructions, they're on our website. Uh, if you have any questions about them, don't hesitate to contact us either by phone or by email. We'd much rather answer a question than have to deal with a problem later. Okay? Don't forget, too, to like us on Facebook, follow us on Instagram, and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Thank you.